so the monument they were making was a pillar of humans. They were throwing them all in there until they, until they and poured cement all over them to make a pillar of souls, a pillar of bodies. And I'm probably so damn bone dry with sanity right now, Alex is going to freak the fuck out. Oh, good lord. Yep. Well, what did I get differently there? Summon zombie is the only thing I can think of. So, now we're going to be, I'm going to be a little lost because I don't know exactly where I need to go. Oh, wait, something's happening. What the? Should Alex try to survey the area? Sure. An unseen force guides Alex's hand towards the painting, compelling her to look behind it. She reaches out and pulls back a painting and discovers a chapter page hidden behind it. Oh, that was easy. Oh, that's the Pillar of Souls. That's what that, pic that's what that picture of is. A sense of familiarity overcomes her, and as the chapter page comes to her fingers, she does the realization that Roberta's spirit is aiding her. Alex has found a chapter page entitled A War to End All Wars hidden behind the painting. The Black Guardian grows restless, my liege. Its hunger increases, and the binding continues to weaken. We feed it flesh, but I fear it will not guard the relic too much longer. There is no choice in the matter. It must remain and guard the artifact until the time of planetary alignment. After that, the Guardian may return to its lair. Our master does not like failure. It is imperative to keep the binding intact. Then we have to find more flesh and bone. Okay. A war to end all wars. The war to end all wars redefined how mankind looked at war and the value of human life. Over 19,000 men lost their lives every day in the trenches of the Somme. Some say uselessly, some invoke a higher cause. I read accounts of the slaughter from many journalists who spent time in the trenches, but I found the account of a certain Peter Jacob to be the most horrible of all. His implication about the ancients' involvement with the war was hideous and so obvious. With the horror of the Battle of the Somme scant miles away and the distant echoes of pounding artillery, a young journalist named Peter Jacob researched his latest story from the front lines. His brought him to Oublier Cathedral, now transformed into a field hospital. I find no solace in the purpose behind all the senseless violence that surrounds me. Young men die at a rate unheard of in centuries of warfare. Shelling, machine guns, mustard gas, rip, pierce, and burn to flesh. Men so gorged on their own urine to stop the insidious gas. The hospitals here cannot cope with the torrent of wounded. Oh, all right. So this is one of the more intense chapters of the game because you get some wicked, some wicked story plots go around this game, and some crazy revelations happen too. So, soldier's letter lies on the table, waiting to be sent home. So this is the church, but this is really far in the church. This is that church where Paul was, but it's really, really far in advance. So they're skipping areas. Since there's no more to do with the um, ancient temple, the uh, Aztec temple place, it's going back to the church. And even though we just did it, well, it's totally radically different. First little first letter from Private Reginald Jackson to his love, Margaret. I was admitted to this hospital on Tuesday. The damage caused to my, my to my legs was slight, but there is no way that I could ever walk normally again. I hate this place. Every day I am reminded that I will never be able to do the things I love. The hospital is a very strange place. 
converted from an old cathedral. There's an odd atmosphere around it, silent but the, for the words of the wounded. But the words of the wounded, calling out in the night. There is no doubt it is haunted. What I find most odd in this place is that you never see anyone leave during the day. It's not right. No goodbyes or farewells. Just an empty bed when you wake. I right, have flash powder and a flash pan, which will allow me to stun people. Yeah, it could stun some enemies. And a lucky penny. An old coin marked in a peculiar manner. It has hold sentimental value for some for someone. Whoever holds the penny will undoubtedly receive a good fortune. I think it gives you magic. It gives you something. But we're not gonna worry about that right now. Maybe it gives you sanity. But um luckily, Mr. Peter Jacob is quite athletic, even though he's just a journalist. He can do a good bit of running. I never liked his socks, the way he's wearing his socks. But this is how it goes. And the sound's going crazy, so I'll be right back. Okay, sound is no longer popping like a popping poppy pop. So we're good now. Within a mother with a motherly voice, the nurse advises that Peter get some rest. Huh. The soldier is rather distressed. Perhaps the loss of a lot of friends to the trench to the trenches of the Somme, Somme, whatever. It confides the only stories here are sad ones, and that the only true heroes are in the mortuary. Uh, yuck. Covered with blood-stained sheets, these poor souls have passed from this world. For them, the suffering is over, but for those around them, the ordeal continues. So it's just, this is a uh, field field hospital. And it's kind of strange how, how modernized the place has gotten. The guard quietly but strongly points out that this area is off-limits to civilians. Huh. I'm just a reporter here. Interesting. The guard frowns and ushers Peter away from the Gorgon. He explains that it's one of the few antiques in the region that has so far survived the war, and that while he's alive, it will remain intact. Not because you're trying to guard it from me doing passing a scripted area earlier, huh? Oh, what's it got here? Peter finds a sealed envelope that seems to have been left behind. Sealed envelope. Shit in here. A sealed envelope, yeah. Soldier's orders. Okay, now what? An official note. On Army Regulation Stationery, the note reads, Private Thompson, by order of Lieutenant Hargraves, on behalf of HRH George V, you are to leave your post of duty and rally in the streets outside of Ublay Cathedral. Further orders will be presented at the rallying point. God save the king. Okay, thanks for pointless information. Nah, not pointless information, it's a cool backstory. I don't think you even have to get that, really. Oh, there's that stupid turnbuckle thing. So yeah, you hear gunshots and, and, and stuff going outside. Like it's not exactly creepy. It's haunting as 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 you know what's going on outside and what's happening in here, but there's people. And when there's people, it's not as you know, it's never never as creepy. So at least that's something. Okay, that's the same thing. Same thing with the rather distressed stuff. Just a disturbing place. So as always, let's check the stats of this guy. Holy shit, this guy has no sanity. Apparently being in the war kind of made him a little shell-shocked and he doesn't like seeing anything bending or people's heads blowing up with demons coming out of them or any of that stuff. So sanity is gonna be a problem. Hit points, they're eh, they're so-so, not the best hit points. But holy shit, look at this guy's freaking spiritual power, huge. So once again, it's gonna be another Paul Luther style thing where uh, the most important part of it, ooh, it's creepy looking. The most important part of it's gonna be magic use. So what do we got here? Guy. With the war being so close, a curfew has been imposed. Traveling outside the hospital is not a safe thing to do. Since intruders will likely to be shot on sight, Peter decides to remain inside. Good decision. That'd be scary to be a journalist during the war, man. I just, I don't know, man, that'd be scary. Hey, what's up? Okay. I, during these, these war times where you have no idea if like the the enemies are going to be in here, it, it just would stink. It would just... Oh, it's probably just so much staff infection going on in here, I guarantee it. I just guarantee it. A soldier's letter sits atop a crate. Okay, grab it. Nice. It has little stains on it. What type of stains is there? Ale stains? Schnapp stains? Second letter from Private Renage Alder Jackson to his love Margaret. I've been here for over a week now, and there's no word when I'll be allowed to leave. Strange things have happened. At night, the sounds of the hospital change. Echoes of voices that don't belong to anyone haunt the walls and corridors. The restless ghosts, perhaps, or sounds of the movement, or whispers. 
I have seen war firsthand. The sounds at night in the, this hospital scare me more than ever I thought possible. What is going on here at night? Why do I feel so threatened? My fears are worsened by the talk of the other young soldiers. One said he had heard cries for help in the middle of the night. Cries that were only answered by snarls of rage and not compassion. Another said Lance Corporal Haskell had not been discharged but had gone missing. I stared at his empty bed with a sense of unholy dread gnawing at my heart. Interesting. Some strange things happening at night and uh, it totally is nighttime right now. So Peter Jacob might witness some shit too. Here's the custodian bell. Can't do anything this time though, the bell's gone. So that was interesting. So the last place to go is talk to this soldier over here where the uh, where Paul Luther was kept incarcerated during the uh, Inquisition, or the false pseudo-Inquisition, the uh, Pia Augustus Inquisition. <laughs> so, hopefully this leads us somewhere, otherwise I'm going to be lost again. What's up? The guard shifts about, obviously bored of this duty and waiting a replacement or perhaps a call to arms. Oh, the soldier's, the soldier's orders. Ah, the guard follows the orders and begins to read them before explaining. Bloody hell! Bloody hell, lad! He must be on the defensive. Following the orders, he takes the leave of his post. Now I can go in this door. Hell yeah. Puzzle solving all the time. Whoa. I guess this is where they're keeping the, uh... The dead bodies. What's that? Stacked like logs, Peter stands before the price of human war. The bloodied corpses of young men who have made their ultimate sacrifice to defend their own countries and those of others. That's disgusting. This got a smell in this room. What's this? Hey, a revolver lies abandoned on a nearby pew. Should Peter pick the revolver up? Hell yeah. Nice. Oh God. Shit just happened, Batman. Oh. And here we are, back in the Hall of Eternal Darkness. Now it's Peter's turn. And we got a new guy, Roberto Bianchi. May your soul rest in well cement, because that's kind of where you are now. And another soul to claim, Peter Jacob. It's getting longer, man. Oh boy. Oh whoa. Weird music going on now. What's that? Oh god!